to all of you. It's my great pleasure to introduce our Scots Macker, Liz Lockheads. <laughs> Woo! It's an absolutely huge honour to have been invited here today as a last minute guest. I only heard about it yesterday actually. Um, and uh, I'm particularly honoured because this event is dedicated to the memory of the great Margot MacDonald. Uh, I really, what an honour. I mean, how sad is it that she was so cruelly robbed of getting to vote in September? I can't believe that. I mean, Margaret MacDonald, I just admired her so much, right from, um, you know, she's, we're practically contemporaries. A Lanarkshire girl like me, um, and uh, I mean, in fact, when I was younger and blonder and bonnier, a couple of times I got mistaken for her and I was so chuffed, it was fantastic. I haven't been here since noon because I wasn't in Glasgow earlier today. Um, I just got here about midway through the event, just before four, just in time to hear Kieran's 25 Reasons. Brilliant. And uh, my God, I've heard so many passionate and brilliant and articulate speeches uh, that I'm in awe. And I'm in awe particularly because I'm not capable of making a passionate, articulate speech myself coming from me. I'm not. Um, uh, I just want to tell you one tiny wee story that very recently I was doing some publicity for a, a, a theatre piece thing and I was asked by this guy, you know, who was interviewing me, I hardly ever get interviewed, but he said, why are all the artists and writers in Scotland pro-independence? And I said, well, it's quite simple, really. I mean, yes, they are. I mean, nearly everybody I know is. And I'm not somebody who falls out with my few friends um, that I have who are not artists and writers who are still voting no. I don't fall out with them. I just keep talking to them. And, you know, they usually want to um, vote no because they feel that working class people should keep together. I think Tommy Shepard, you know, put that a passionate argument against that, which was so fabulous. Um, so why are all the artists and writers pro-independence? And I said to this guy, well, it's obvious. It's because we're sick and tired of being colonised in our own country, C culturally colonised in our own country. So I'm just going to do two, um, two pieces um, that are dramatic um, things, not in my own voice at all. Um, uh, and why, you think, why did she get a chance to come up here and talk about these characters, you know, talk in the voices of these two characters from history? You know, why talk from history? And I would like to say that my thing is about the question we've been asked in September. What's so great about it is, it's about time. That's why it's about time we're answering that question. And uh, I'm going to open with a speech which um, has become quite famous, I'm pleased to say, uh, because I did it for um, the great Jerry Mulgrew and Communicado Theatre Company. And uh, it was it's almost 30 years old, this speech. And it was for a play called Mary Queen of Scots Got Her Head Chopped Off. A weird play, you would think, uh, to write. Um, particularly as it came from Jerry Mulgrew's imagination and my imagination, and we're both Republicans and socialists. Why were we writing a play about this? Because for us, it wasn't a history play, or not entirely. And anyway, it's a very good story. So this is the opening speech, and the character's a crow. She's a talking crow, and here's what she says. Country, Scotland. What like is it? It's a peat bog. It's a dark forest. It's a cauldron of lie, a salt pan or a coal mine. If you're gay lucky, it's a bonny bricked beer meadow or a park o' kai. Or maybe it's a field of stains. It's a tenement or a merchant's hall. It's a hoorhoos or a humble cot. Princey Street or Paddy's Market. It's a fistful of fish or a pickle of oatmeal. It's a queen's banquet or roast meats and junkets. It depends. It depends. I dinna ken what like your Scotland is. Here's mines, national flower, 
the thistle, national pastime nostalgia, national weather, smear, ha, drizzle, snow, <laughs> national birds, the crow, the corby, la corbe, le corbeau, moi. How me? Eh, eh, eh. Voice like a choked laugh. Rag bag o a bird in my black duds. Oh, angles and elbows and broken oxter feathers. Black beady in in my executioner's hood. No bra, but I think I hear sort of black glamour. Do I no put you in mind of the skating minister? Or, on the other foot, the parish priest, the dirty beast. I live. Manis a reckless sticks. I live on lamb's eyes and road accidents. Oh, see, after the battle, after the battle, man, it's a pure feast. My eyes are our big, even for my belly. In lean years of peace, my belly thinks its throat's been cut. And she takes the two queens, Mary on her right-hand side, Elizabeth on the other, and parades them. And she says, once upon a time, there were two queens on the one green island. And the one green island was split into two kingdoms, but no equal kingdoms. <laughs> Nobody in their right mind would insist on that. For the northern kingdom was cold and small, and the people were low-statured and ignorant and feared of their lords, and poor, they were starving. And their queen was beautiful and tall and fair and Frenchified. The other kingdom in the island was large and prosperous, with wheat and barley and fat kai in the fields of our yeoman farmers and wool in our looms and beer in our barrels and at the mouth of our greatest river, a great port, a glistening city that sucked all wealth to its centre, which was a palace and a court of a queen. She was a cousin a clever cousin, a wee bit older, and maybe no so bra as the other queen, but a queen nevertheless. Queen o' oh, a country with an army and a navy and dominion over many lands. Two queens, one green island. Co, co, co. And I'm going to finish up with a recent dramatic piece that I did for a project of the National Theatre of Scotland called Dear Scotland. Anyway, pretend if you like that I'm 36, and I'm not me, I'm a man of about 36. I'm Robert Burns. He only lived till he was 37. Picture it, him at his best, his bonny best, um, but um, he's immortal, he's stuck in time, and uh, he's stuck. He's got to write this letter to Scotland, and he's stuck. He's trying to make it up, and here he goes. He's chewing a quill pen biro. I've only got an ordinary biro. And he's scribbling, grimacing, tapping his teeth, and he's in mid-competition composition of what he wants to say to you, Scotland, today. Dear Scotland, darling Scotia, now nah, that's shit. Hear me, my native land. OTT? I bet. Try, dear Caledonia, stern and wild, and hit the romantic note. As long as you steer up young and old, get them fit for their big vote. Now, isn't this bra portrait or your bard a gem? A very icon, fit for sticking on a dish clout or in a frame. Naismith prettified me in print, in pent. New to all of them, I'm Rabbi. I'm your man. The greatest, the creme de la creme at standard happy. For yon is what Litcrit calls the form I wrote in. Habitually, that dum de dum you all quote in because it sticks. I will allow it stoughton. This nifty stanza I could go to sick lensway, say sick a lot in, largs to la cranza, 
plucked into Peebles, Old Air to Aberdeen, Glasgow, Embra, Alawa to Wick and all points in between, look to me, rhyming, to reason arguments on teen, to reason arguments on teen, with rigor. In it, I can persuade, seduce, or vent my spleen with vim and vigor. I'm quoted. Misquoted whiles, a lack to fair to admit posterity's a broad kirk kind of affair. They pick and choose their bits of ye. As Scots, what air their bag is, commemorate my birth with wispy neeps, hot air and haggis. This January, this January, hanseled in a most auspicious year. At suppers cross the land, the slogan here, I know the poet in me, all sought to commandeer is on their side. Yup. Shit or get aft the pot, time's nearly here. <laughs> Time nor tide, as the poet said, nay man can tether. And Christ, that poet was me. But only blether that tries to sign me up as a better aft together. Get stuffed. I'll tell them in language purpler than the heather, enough. That parcel of rogues in 1707, after the Darien disaster, will near be forgiven, had us bought and sold for English gold, bastards driven by greed and gain, taking us till new, and somehow still, by descent riven, to get free again. Should Scotland be an independent country? The question will surely say I too. They can't manifest yin good reason why we shouldn't. Yes, the best yin, the only answer. So screw your courage. Stick a saltire in the yes yin on the voting paper. Oh, sake. That is really crap, Rab. Only answer. Voting paper, that will not do. Not only does it not rhyme, barely even makes it into the assonance category. It's not even half assonance, actually. Half assonance, half assonance at best. Half assed, half assonance at best. Plus, your prosody is pish. See, trouble is, I'm finding it hell of a hell of a hard to get going in a poem with saying something so bloody obvious. What kind of country doesn't want to take responsibility for its own affairs? Are you a country or are you a region? How are you going to answer that big, that simple question? Should Scotland be an independent country? Vote no and you'll be under Tory rule forever if Middle England says so. Vote yes. And, oh, dearie me, though, maybe be a wee bit more to pay on the taxes. If, if you are one of those affluent enough to pay it, be glad and proud to be part of a democracy with the power to make compassionate and just choices. <laughs> Christ Almighty, don't talk to me, don't talk to my bairns, don't talk to my good wife, Jean, about poverty. All right, all right, all right, forget it. That's in the past, and what's by is by. But you, on the 18th, have a chance to make a choice, to make the first of many good and independent choices. Do you want Trident? You could wake up on the 19th of September not to work as if you were in the early days of a better nation, but to be alive. Now, in the early days of a better nation, if you make it so, and no, I never said it would be easy, not in prose, rhyme, rap, hip-hop, verse libra, sonnet, syllabics, standard habit, nor ne'er-do-well doggerel. You would have to make it up. Make it up as you go along, as I do. Open your hearts and hope. Open your minds to change. Open up the future because it's not yet written. It's as open as that it's coming yet is true. But close the gap between what we say and what we do. 
Okay, okay, begin again. Okay. Let your rejection or the status quo be as robust as all Scotia's wish to no see it for dust is. A new Scotland's passion for social justice be our base note. Look to the future. Show her what trust is. Give her a yes vote. Thank you.